All right, case uh, nine. So this I was thinking like a cystic sebaceous epithelioma versus even a sebaceous carcinoma. Yeah, so sebaceous epithelioma, I guess, is a term I don't really use. I kind of think of that as analogous to sebaceoma, like kind of like how basal cell carcinoma used to be called basal cell epithelioma. There, it's like a, kind of an older, older term or a term at least that I'm not fam as familiar with how to use. But yeah, that when I looked at this slide, and again, I don't know the history here, just looking at this cold, I either thought this is either a huge sebaceous adenoma or sebaceoma, whichever way you want to put it, or it's a sebaceous carcinoma. I'm actually concerned towards the carcinoma side here. And the reason is because it's so big. And I don't think that that is a firm, fast rule like in the books, but I feel like in real life, I start getting worried, even if something doesn't look really pleomorphic or infiltrative, if I have a really large sebaceous lesion that's pushing deep down, that makes my, my threshold get a lot lower towards calling something malignant or at least saying, hey, it's an, an atypical sebaceous neoplasm and I'm not sure. But this one has got, it doesn't have pleomorphism, but it's got some of the, a lot of those uh, germinative basal or blue cells with mitotic activity, clear cut, obvious, mature sebacytes in here. So the sebaceous differentiation is obvious here. No stains needed, right? Those are definitely sebacytes. So the question is then just deciding, is it benign or malignant? I would vote probably towards malignant here, but I could totally see someone saying that they were comfortable with this being a big sebaceous adenoma or sebaceoma with cystic change. Um, so it kind of just depends on your, your threshold and how comfortable you are. Um, and uh, this is one thing I will point out though. I don't feel that this here is terribly helpful in deciding benign or malignant. It's a bunch of necrosis, right? But look at the cells. They're all dead sebacytes. They're not dead like sheets of those blue basaloid cells. They're dead sheets of bubbly sebacytes. And remember, sebacytes in a normal sebaceous gland are supposed to die, right? That's how sebaceous secretion works. The cells get filled with lipid and get bubbly. They die and they slough off into the secretion. And that's what sebum is made of, the, the husks of dead lipid-filled cells. Kind of gross, right? But that's how it works. It's holocrine secretion method. And so sebaceous neoplasms recapitulate that. So to me, I don't personally feel that by itself, dead sheets of sebacytes are super helpful in telling if something is benign or malignant. I think you can see that. Sheets of blue basaloid cells that are necrotic, that starts making me pretty worried. And again, I don't know if anyone has a definitive answer, but this is just the way that I currently think about this and approach it in real life. But uh, in practice, I would probably favor this to be a sebaceous carcinoma, personally, one that is on the very well differentiated end and mimicking sebaceous adenoma or sebaceoma. And also, um, when you see sebaceous neoplasms with big cystic spaces like this in them, that is a stronger indication that the patient may very well have miratory syndrome. Some people have reported that, like sebaceous adenomas that are cystic are often miratory associated. So when I see that, I'll usually mention that in the comment, that that's a particular finding that favors sebaceous, or uh, miratory. Okay. Uh, case 10. Well, I meant to go one minute per slide and clearly failing, so... I'm going to hustle more. Okay. Sebaceous adenoma. Yep. I would call this sebaceous adenoma. It's got sebacytes, mature, bubbly, more than 50%, and it's nice and small, circumscribed, kind of bulging down from the epidermis, and they're often ulcerated and inflamed on top. That doesn't bother me. If it's transected and I'm, I'm a little worried about it, sometimes I'll say, I think it's an adenoma, but I can't see the base. I don't feel like you normally have to excise them, but every once in a while, if I'm a little worried that I might have the top of something worse, I'll mention that uh, to the and ask the derm to please do a small excision. Because I have been burned before something I thought was sebaceous adenoma, and then it got excised later, and it turned out to be sebaceous carcinoma, but superficially didn't really look atypical. So now if I'm, if I'm worried, then I'll make that comment. 